Do shapeshifters, entities that can change from one creature to another, really exist? And do they go back to ancient times? The fact is, there are more examples of people shifting their form throughout history than we might imagine, with accounts of people with the ability to change their form going right back to the legends of the ancient world. With this in mind, we might ask just how real shapeshifters actually are. Legends of entities that can change their form can be found all over the world. The Jinn from Eastern Legends, for example, have the ability to shift from a human form to any number of animals. Likewise, many legends from ancient Egypt speak of this ability in the gods, with many depictions of them having a human body with the head of an animal, perhaps the best example being Anubis, who had the head of a jackal, which is perhaps particularly intriguing given the legends of werewolves that we will examine shortly. In Norse mythology, we find Loki, who could not only change himself into various animals, but can also assume the form of a giant. Perhaps some of the most interesting of these legends of shapeshifters in ancient times can be found in the writings of ancient Greece. There are several examples of Zeus full assuming the form of different animals so he could spy upon his enemies, and even of him taking the appearance of a woman's husband in an attempt to trick her into conceiving his child. There are also writings in the Iliad by Homer that speak of the god Proteus, who could change his form as quickly as the movement of the waves of the water. Arguably one of the oldest depictions of shapeshifting can be found in a cave painting at the cave of the Tros Freyes in the south of France. The painting itself, named the Sorcerer, dates back to approximately 13,000 BC, making it around 15,000 years old. It depicts a strange creature that has the features of both a human and an animal. Not only that, the form and positioning of the figure give the impression that it is a flux, essentially, that it is metamorphosizing or shape-shifting from one creature to another. Given the accepted notion that the people of this time created such artwork from what they had seen, we have to ask just what was witnessed to have inspired this depiction in Tros Freyas. One of the most well-known shapeshifters, both throughout history and around the world, is the werewolf. Accounts of which stretch as far back as ancient Greece, who believed that cursed men would transform into a wolf during the full moon. Indeed, this notion was seemingly passed down through the ages, and particularly throughout Europe, where not only was the belief in werewolves rife, but those beliefs often revolved around curses or witchcraft. As much of Europe came out of the Dark Ages, which lasted almost a thousand years with little human advancements and minimal record keeping between the 5th and 14th centuries, many writings and accounts of shapeshifters, specifically werewolves, can be found on record. One of the earliest of these, and one of the most disturbing, is the account of Peter Stubbe, a wealthy farmer from what is modern-day Germany in 1589. Claims of sightings of a wolf-like creature stalking both livestock and people had been rampant in the town. So much so that on one evening, having taken matters into their own hands, a group of residents managed to track down and corner this beast-like figure. However, when the mob closed in, the wolfman was no longer there. Instead, there lay Peter Stubby. Whether he was telling the truth or whether it was a confession offered through torture, Stubby admitted to the killing of several people and even went on to state that he had made a deal with the devil when he was a 12-year-old boy. As part of this deal, Stubby was given a strange belt that gave him the power to change his form into a wolf. Stubby, incidentally, was executed shortly after his confession. What is perhaps interesting about Stubby's claims of being given a strange belt are the legends of a wolf strap, which is found in many werewolf accounts. And what's more, many of these accounts state this wolf strap is given to those who have sold their soul to the devil. One particularly interesting incident, which very similar to that of Peter Stubby, comes from Russia around the same time. According to the account, residents of an unnamed village were becoming increasingly suspicious of a man who lived alone on the outskirts of the settlement, not least because of the strange animal-like tracks often seen outside his home, a home, incidentally, that he rarely left. One evening, several of the villagers decided to hide inside the strange man's house after he had seemingly left for the evening. However, a sudden howling sound sent them scurrying out of the abode in fright. As they left, they noticed fresh animal-like tracks in the ground leading from the man's house. 